airplanes, we don't get any do-overs. You stall and spin this, that's it. No do-overs. The problem is we're still losing people in GA, and the airlines have a tool, a technique, and a method available to them that they're using every day that is available to us, but we have to understand what that tool is and we have to implement it. So not only today am I going to give you the problems, I'm also gonna give you the solution. I've got your airspeed indicator marked with a special mark. That's now our defined minimum maneuvering speed. So the concept is to have a defined minimum maneuvering speed. I did hesitate for a second. You did hesitate. Now I gotta get rid of your hesitation. Yeah. I was due to get my biannual flight review done for my FAA pilot license. And I'm flying halfway across the country to do it. Now I could have done it somewhere closer. That would have been a lot easier. But Dan Greider, one of my favorite American CFIs, reached out recently to tell me he'd had a bit of an epiphany. He said he could explain it to me within the context of doing my BFR. He's based in Atlanta, Georgia, one of the busiest airports in the world. And Dan told me we were gonna hit the ground running and he wanted me to have a camera rolling in my hand when I landed. So I knew he was up to something. It's always an adventure with Dan, so let's get into it. There he is. How you doing? Hey, brother. How are you? Good. I got a little one rolling, I got a big one in the bag, so. Oh, okay, I'm all right. Dan has a theory that he wants to explore, and it starts by asking airline pilots and GA pilots the same set of four questions. So Dan's been talking to a lot of airline pilots and getting the same answers, but pretty much all of them don't want to be identified for obvious reasons, so we're staying wide on this one. For your jet that you're currently flying, whatever it is, is maneuvering speed a minimum or a maximum? So it's going to be a minimum. Minimum, yeah. Maneuvering speed, it's a minimum. Maneuvering speed is a minimum speed. A maximum. It's a maximum. Maximum. It is a maximum. Maximum. A maximum. In your jet, you always know the limit on the slowest speed allowed in each configuration. Yes. Give me a speed card, so Yeah, you, okay. Yes, yes uh, lowest selectable is always depicted on the speed tape. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I, no, not, the, not what it should be. Not always, no. Uh, no. I don't know right down to the knot, but I know within a couple of knots. You'd have to think about it for a little bit. No, usually no. And if you're flying your swept wing jet at 1500 AGL and you let it get slow and stall and spun, would you be able to recover it in time before hitting the earth? 1500 feet would be a, a real challenge to recover anything. No, I would say no. Oh, no, not as bad. Uh, no. Yeah, maybe. Probably. I'd like to think so. Probably. <laughs> I'd hope so. I do think so. To an airline pilot, then, which is more important, a strong stall recovery skill set or prevention of low speed scenarios through speed awareness? Uh, the low speed scenario awareness, definitely. Definitely prevention. Absolutely prevention of a low speed scenario. It's not prevention. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'd say the recovery skill set, but never getting in it is also just as good. Recovery of spins and stalls. Strong stall recovery, probably. The problem is we're still losing people in GA and the airlines have a tool, a technique, and a method available to them that they're using every day that is available to us, but we have to understand what that tool is and we have to implement it. Uh, many years ago, it was a Cessna 172, and my buddy that I taught to fly made a takeoff, had an engine failure at about 300 feet, pulled the nose up, apparently stalled and spun the airplane, killed three people. Uh, and then just a year later, another buddy of mine, Leo Giles, in a Kit Fox, same runway, same airport, same conditions, did the exact same thing. Having lost his student and friend Brock and his colleague Leo to almost identical accidents, Dan was highly motivated to find a solution to this problem that GA seems to have, which the airlines have solved. It's always one of the four, loss of thrust on takeoff, a messed up go around, inadvertent IMC after takeoff specifically, and maneuvering in the traffic pattern is one of these four. That's when we're, we're under our highest susceptibility of losing another general aviation airplane. So I had a pretty good idea that this BFR was gonna be going above and beyond the usual. There's a lot to cover here, so I've edited out things like run-ups and non-critical phases of flight, but rest assured, all checklists were complete. There you go, getting rid of the flaps. All right, good, nice and slow. Yep. Get your 50-foot obstacle cleared, and now we've still got a little bit of a hill out there, so leave it full power and climb as best 
angle of climb all the way up. You're the pilot flying, your left seat, uh, conduct yourself. It's a Piper Warrior, just like you're used to. So not only today am I going to give you the problems, I'm also gonna give you the solution. First on the agenda, and throughout the day really, was losing power. Okay, yeah, so, <laughs> so we're just going straight ahead because we got no, we've got not enough height for this. We don't have a quick cause check, but we don't have time for even that, so right. we're just going to make you speed. Pick you out a, a road or a ravine or something in there. Yeah, well, I got a kind of a ravine there, but there's not much here. This is pretty okay. ugly. All right. Here we go. Okay. And I'm going to give you three or four of those in a row now, and I want you to be even more Marker. Johnny on the spot yeah. for me, okay? I'm going to tell you that your engine is about to fail, and when I do it, I want to see this deck angle make an immediate change. Okay. Whatever you got to do to get this nose down, ideally the speed should remain the same. Okay, ready? Here you go. Push. Push more. There yeah. you go. I want you to get light in the seat. Yeah, okay. Now, I will tell you that the airlines, especially the commuters, have gone to a policy where they specifically say, stall recovery, they want you to get light in the seat. They use those words. The FAA has gone from a stance of not losing any altitude during a stall recovery to they don't care how much altitude you lose in the stall recovery. Lose whatever altitude you need to to not lose control of the airplane. You have a, a, a 286 computer, did you know that? So Your brain is a 286 oh, computer. Right, right. Yeah, you really gotta get light to get, yeah, you know, keep that speed from bleeding off. You gotta punch it down, eh? Right, you gotta do this enough times that you see it, feel it, and you're ready for it. Yeah, because then you gotta work the problem, but you can't not, you gotta, this has gotta happen first. This has gotta happen first. You gotta be Johnny on the spot, be ready for it, keep it there, keep it there. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta react, man. It can't be any thinking, it's gotta just be a reflex, right? That's it. Dan actually considers this part of his pre-takeoff checklist, and you'll see on flight two that he'll add it to the list he gives me. Step one, before you ever push that throttle forward, is talk to yourself and be expecting it. On takeoff, I am expecting an engine failure. When it happens, I'm gonna say, there it is, push, or whatever technique that you want. Be ready for it, just like I had you ready for it. After 10 of those, you knew what was coming next, and it was no big deal because as soon as you heard the pitch change, you dumped the nose. Yeah. When you hear the pitch change, dump the nose. The shock or hesitation factor was definitely something that probably played a role in both Brock and Leo's crashes. Dan's trying to mitigate that. Unload the wing, hear the noise, hear the lack of noise, dump the nose and unload the wing and you're gonna be great. And pull the nose up, that's where a stall is gonna occur. Go ahead and pull the nose up and let's climb at 60. I'm gonna give you an engine failure and I want you to maintain the same deck angle even even though the power is gone, okay? So let it stall is what you're saying. Let it stall, yep. Let the ambient spin happen, pick up the wing and recover? Yeah. Do you want me on power for recovery? Uh, no, we're gonna do a power, a, a no power recovery. Okay. Okay. So my hand is staying here, which is weird for me, but I will not yep. touch the throttle. Okay. Yep. yep. So keep, keep, keep the it. pitch, yep. Yeah, so See that speed going away, look how fast, and there's our horn, yeah. there's our six seconds, and there's your buffet. See there, we shook the airplane. Okay. Within six seconds, we stalled, because yeah. we didn't little lower the nose. The natural human instinct during time of crisis is to pull this thing back. Yeah. And we can't afford to do it. When you do it, did you notice how fast the speed went away? You got the horn, the wing started shaking. Just that fast. Right here you go. So keep it there? Keep it there. So when I get the buffet, I'll recover? Recover. Yeah. Yeah, it was fast. I don't even know if that was six seconds. We'll look at the video to see. So keep it there? Keep it there. So when I get the buffet, I'll recover? Recover. Yeah. Pretty quick. If you're totally not expecting it, your 286 computer stops functioning, uh -huh. you don't know what to do, and chances are nine out of 10 pilots will actually pull back. Did you know that I was a ballet dancer? I did not know that. Yeah, professional. I got the leotards and everything. Full of surprises. Yeah. In ballet dancing, they let you rehearse and do over. Once you want to make a really bad mistake, they let you go back out there and try it again. Airplanes, we don't get any do-overs. You stall and spin this, that's it. No do-overs. I've got your airspeed indicator marked with a special mark. That's now our defined minimum maneuvering speed. The concept is to have a defined minimum maneuvering speed. So in this case, it's the DC-3. The clean stall speed of this airplane is 68. The dirty 
stall speed is 64. So I did the math, 68 knots times 1.404 is my calculation. It comes out to 89.9 knots. So I'm going to call it 90 knots. That's the slowest I'm going to let this airplane fly. And I'm going to take a piece of uh, standard tape and cut a quick sliver in the form of an airspeed indicator marker so that I can put this on the airspeed indicator at 90 knots. And what that does for me, that gives me a reference while I'm flying, nothing less than 90. That's my reminder. I don't have to do any math. I don't have to think about it. And anybody that's uh, sitting in a seat and sees the airplane going slower than 90 can start hollering uh, to get something done about it. And on a warrior, it comes out to about 70 knots. That means that if you lost an engine and wanted a glide speed that would still give you stall protection, at 30 degrees angle of bank, that speeds the minimum to, to, to fly. Maneuvering, don't go slower than that until you're on final and you got some more flaps out and you're red over white and you're coming down and your wings unloaded and everything's good. Then if you want to slow up to 1.2 VSO with full flaps or whatever you like, if you honor that line, it's going to protect you all the way up to the limit and keep you from stalling. That's the 30% buffer that the FAA wants you to have. 1.404 is kind of a funny number. I'm starting with the clean stall speed of the airplane in wings level condition, which is a 1.3 number, except that we also want to be able to maneuver the airplane up to 30 degrees angle of the bank. So the question comes in, how much does your stall speed increase in a 30 degree bank if you're trying to hold altitude? Answer is approximately 8%. It's not 1.3 plus 0.8. You have to do the math. It's 8% above 1.3. The number is 1.404. So there's your reminder. If you'll give me that line as a minimum, then yeah. you've got 30%. And you can bank, you can do whatever you want. Just don't go below that line. I did hesitate for a second. You did hesitate. Now I gotta get rid of your hesitation. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. I felt light in my seat right there. 30 more of those, yeah. we will have you ready to go. We're also going to do inadvertent IMC, a demonstration on task management and how to not get task saturated during the after takeoff phase and I've got a uh, drill that I'm going to put you through on that. We're going to pretend like uh, you filed an IFR and it's uh, real low, it's 100 overcast out here. So I want to see you make a takeoff and stay on your heading and altitude that they give you. And to add some extra stress, Dan set me up with an already annoyed controller. I'm at 389 or 72, I need your intentions as soon as you know them. Uh, we're going to go to the whole short line and do a run up down here. Okay, you're not answering my question. What is your destination or requested altitude? It started to become clear to me that what Dan was doing was playing the role of an inept pilot while actually phoning in an IFR flight plan on his cell. 972 is ready to copy clearance. 839 clear to the Savannah Airport as filed. Maintain 3,000. Expect 7,000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 124.2, squawk 3135. Okay, we're clear to Savannah as filed. We're going to maintain 3,000, expect 7,000, 10 minutes after. It'll be on 124.2, squawking 3135. Check 972, read back, correct, advise when ready for departure. All right, now, we're not ready for departure yet. But I didn't get a heading. So I didn't read that back, did I? I must have. And can I verify for 8972 that we was uh, maintain runway heading in 3,000? 972 negative, I did not give you a heading yet. So that's good, when you're not sure, ask. When you're not sure, ask. Because I, I didn't write it down and I didn't remember saying it, but she said read back correct what I did write down. So, I'm secure, you're secure, door is closed, gonna close my window, pre-takeoff check is complete. Here's here's the deal, it's your takeoff. You have, you have ATC, you've got the airplane, I'll help keep you safe. After takeoff, I'm gonna hand you your after takeoff checklist, okay? Uh-huh. You have to do everything on my after takeoff checklist before you can answer her. When she tells me to switch? Yeah. Okay. You, no you, matter how much she screams at you, do not answer her until you have all of this done. All right? And is it a coincidence that you've already got her mad at us? It's not a coincidence. You planned that. Well, I've been trying to egg her on a little bit the I, whole time, I, so. I've been sensing that. Okay. <laughs> and she's kind of pissed at us already. She already is pissed. So Dan's doing a pretty good job sort of setting up some stress and attempting to distract me, and I'm dying to know what he's got on his list. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm staying under the hood. 
You are staying under the hood. And he picked a really busy time to slide it over. Okay, power is set. And despite how tempting it was to look, I did not. I stayed focused on my job. Temperatures and pressures are still good. Airspeed is alive. And I'm trying to fly this airplane with only looking at instruments on the runway, so you're definitely looking out, right? I'm definitely looking out. You're doing fine. Fly away from the ground here. So Rotate nice and easy. Good. Stay on those gauges. Watch your heading. Sorry, just keep runway heading out. Yeah? Yep, runway heading. Yep. Okay, so you're runway heading to 500 feet, and I can yep. start to turn to 120. And now you can start working on your after takeoff checklist. I don't feel comfortable looking down oh, yet. Okay. So low, would you agree? I'm pretty low to. I agree. I'm just trying to get you to bite off on that. Yeah, this is a fly the airplane moment. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Fly the airplane. Yeah, those things come later. But then the moment of truth, the controller contacted me, and it took everything I had to resist keying that mic to answer before I got to the list, which I hadn't looked at yet. Okay. Commander 72, contact Atlanta departure today. Yeah, good boy. Boost off. Lane laid off. Pedo on. Flaps are up. Oh, Jesus, you're going to make me do that math in my head? There you go, right there. Son of a bitch. Now, I was never good at math, but the pressure I was feeling here, it was hilarious that I couldn't even do simple addition. 115, I got that right? No, I didn't even get it right. So I got to do it until it's right? Got to do it until it's right. 16. All right. All okay. right. Okay, we're contacting a departure for 8972. Yeah, that's that's hard, eh? Because I was like, what basic math was hard because I was so stressed out about not calling her. Oh, that was good, man. That was a good exercise. What's important? Flying the airplane first. Which I did, yeah. Which you did, nicely. Then do your switches, flaps. Yeah. Last step is acknowledge her radio. People think that when a controller talks to them, they have to drop what they're doing and answer the controller. It's nice to work with the controllers, and they do a very good job. But your number one job is to fly the airplane. Next thing we're going to talk about up here is our go-arounds. Cause of death, fatal accidents, and flawed go-arounds. What could go wrong on a go-around? Configure for landing, you're, sl you're slow, your power is, is back. Right, so now all of a sudden you gotta go. So I guess the problem is if you pull back without getting it cleaned up and get your power, you're gonna run out of energy. You have, depending on the airplane, you could have carburetor heat on, you could have full flaps, you could have the power back, and the nose down, you're rotating up into a go-around attitude and retracting at the flaps at the same time. If you never add power and you still got carburetor heat on, that's a bad recipe. On landing, you got one hand here and one hand here. Uh -huh. During a go-around, both of them are going to push. Yeah. Pitch and power. Lower the nose and add full power. If you, if you unload the wing and add full power, then you're cleared to go on. And then start bringing the flaps up nice and slow. Two hands, both of them forward. Don't memorize it. Just do it. Just push, just push both of your appendages forward. You can flip your hood off now. We're done with your instrument stuff. I got the airplane. I'm gonna put you on a left downwind for runway 14. I'll tell you in advance, you're definitely gonna get a go around. What's the difference between a missed approach, a go around, and a rejected landing? Uh, missed approach, you are expecting it because you know it's coming, I'm ready, I'm cocked and loaded. When I get those minimums, I don't see it, I'm going. So it's right. less of a surprise maybe. A uh, go around could be any number of go oh, now. ATC is saying there's something on runway. You got you. You're not necessarily ready for it. Right? Can you do a rejected landing while you're while you're on the approach? Oh, uh, why not? Like I mean, if I don't like it. The rejected landing and a missed approach are both go arounds. A rejected landing occurs below MDA, below DH, or past the missed approach point. A rejected landing means you've transitioned out of the instrument approach. Went below minimums because you saw it, but still had to go around. Well, we're going to do it wrong. We're going to give it full power, and we're going to retract the, the flaps too the soon. Left okay. All right. Way. All right. Hold it. All right. Let's go around. Full power. All right. I'm going to dump your flap. Oh yeah. See there? Wow. Yeah. That's dramatic. Okay. So yeah, you do not. Yeah, you're just going to sink if you do that. Well, you're just All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn. <laughs> you got it right when I was looking away. You were on it though. I was. Make sure you get your energy going before you retract flaps. Yeah. Don't let the nose rear up. When you add power, this airplane wants to rear up like a horse. That's why you want to push both. You just want to push. And Griffin traffic, it's Piper 8972, it's base to final, only 1-4 for the option. Griffin. 
I'll call your go around. On your go around, I want to see full power and nose down to at least level before you touch anything else. Get the airplane fully under control, the wing unloaded, everything nice, and then reach for flaps. Just for grins, I'm going to give you carburetor heat so they'll give you one more task to do during your go around. All right, let's go around. Okay, I got it. I all got right, it. Yeah. all right, good, nose back up. Yeah, you're definitely making it into a reflex for me. You've been proved a thousand percent just on what we've got done so far. Perfect. Nice. Nice. And with that, we ended our first day of training. The conditions on day two mirrored the weather from the days both Brock and Leo had their accidents. Perfect, clear VFR. So it was fitting that our plan was to visit the site pay our respects, and continue the learning. Check, check. Gotcha. All right. Your objective here is to do the before takeoff checklist, and if you'll notice, the before takeoff checklist has been modified to include one last step, and that is a big reminder that you're going to get an engine failure on takeoff. You think about it on takeoff and be ready for it. No surprise, no hesitation, and no delay. When it happens, you unload that wing and get the nose down, and then sort out your options. So before takeoff check. Controls, free and correct, flight instruments. Check, I checked the other ones while taxiing. Field select is going to stay where it is. Armor's locked. Car beats off. Flaps are going to be zero for this one, or we're going to do a short field again? Right, you can stay zero, it's fine. Harness and belts, you good? Yep. Door is latched top and bottom? Top and bottom. Mixture is set. Fuel pump is on. All right, so after takeoff, I will lose the engine. And I will say, there it is. I will push immediately, no hesitating, no thinking about it, just get it done. All right, so pre-day-off check is complete. All right. Griffin traffic, it's Piper Warrior 8972. About to depart straight out, runway 14 in Griffin. Power is set. Airspeed is live. Engine temperature and pressure are good. Climbing for the yellow line. Now, climbing left-hand turn. Clear left. Clear left. Cleared a thousand feet, and you did not lose the engine, so that's good. But you were ready for it. I, I mean, was. I was ready. This is the airport where both Brock and his passengers and Leo died on a VFR clear in a million day with an engine failure on runway 31, the runway we're about to land on. Engine failure at 400 feet. And uh, in each case, the nose was not lowered, the airplane stalled and spawned and hit, hit vertical. And when we get to about 250 or 300, I'm going to give you an engine failure, just so you can see about where, where they would have been. Check the landing. All right, this is the runway where the accidents happened. All right, the carburetor heat is on. All right, let's go around. All right, pull the nose up. Fly right on the defined minimum speed right there. You're in the same spot right now where Brock lost his engine. There it is, push, yeah, wow. All right, I'm gonna slide my seat back. I'm going on break. All right. Is this a beverage flight or a meal flight? All right, uh, so the sun's going down and uh, you've been here to America three days for your biennial flight review, Steve, and uh, kind of an exaggerated flight review, but we got a lot of stuff done. Your biennial flight review worked out really good. We learned a lot and it was fast paced and we hit you hard. I screwed you with your head on numerous occasions and I want you to know I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it too, man. It's good. That's, that's the best learning when you're under pressure, right? Yeah. And as a reward for letting him kick my butt for a few days, Dan set me up with a ride in a T6, which is a really awesome way to end this trip. And I want to thank sponsors and supporters for helping us create this content. This one was a pretty serious message. It's really close to Dan's heart, and I really appreciate him working so hard with me to try to tell this story. Please comment if you've got any thoughts or questions. This is definitely a conversation we all need to have. If you felt you learned something, please share this video. 
All right, Steve, well, congratulations. Your Bino flight review is complete. We'll use ForeFlight and uh, sign off your logbook electronically. Uh, big thanks to ForeFlight and all your uh, sponsors for uh, keeping the channel going. And uh, I'm going to give you a Bino flight review sign off, and you should be good to go, young man. I'll see you in uh, two more years. Uh, in your case, probably sooner. <laughs> all right, thanks, man. You bet. Our entire system out there, it needs new concept, it needs review. Those four things are what I'm after. They're super simple to understand. They're super simple to review. Anybody can placard your own airplane and bulletproof yourself and make yourself better. And Brock wasn't trained. It's my fault. I know it's my fault. Yeah, that's a hard thing to take with you, man. I think what you're doing is, is in yeah. his honor. Yeah, we're, we're trying. Yeah, that's good, man. That's heavy. No, yeah, you can't take that on. That's not your fault.